For this video, Matt is going to walk you through how to make a graph using Excel, one of the simple ways that we use in class. Uh, today, we're going to be showing you how to create a graph on your Excel sheet based on the data that you have. So here I have some data from a different lab, uh, not one that you're going to do in this class. Um, and we're going to show you the basic uh, te techniques to create a plot and what is expected, right? So I have a data table up here with all my calculated data from this experiment. Uh, what I did, what we're gonna graph is the, the values in blue here. So I'm gonna show you two methods to do it uh, in Excel. Uh, so what I did initially is I just copy and pasted these values down here, uh, solubility and KSB. And so what you can do is you can highlight all the data. And then you can go to insert up here. You cl click the type of plot you have. I think for most experiments, you're going to be using a scatter plot. And so if you have a scatter plot here, you can see that uh, my data is now plotted, right? Uh, you can change the chart, chart title. So this would be something like, um uh solubility effects on ASP. Right. And then you want to also label your X and Y axis, right? So you can go back to you go up here to chart design, you add a chart element, uh, and then you can write axis titles, so primary vertical. So you can change this to um, KSP. This is unit list, but if it had units, we would put percent in units. But this is, I mean, excuse me, parentheses units, but this value is unit list. Uh, then we'll do the next one. So we'll go back up here, axis titles, primary horizontal. And then we'll put um, solubility. of H T minus, we'll make that a superscript. Can we? There we go. Go to form. It's not format. Yeah, font, we go superscript. Okay. Yeah, so H G minus and this concentrate this the units for this is in molarity, which that's in superscript. So we'll take that out of superscript. So font and take that down. Okay. And so so you always wanna have all of these elements, right? A title, label your axes, make sure you put your units, right? Um, this particular experiment doesn't require a trend line, but we're going to put one in there just so we can show you how to do it, right? So if you click on your data, and then if you have a PC, you'll right-click. If you have a Mac, you'll, you'll I guess, two-finger click. And then this drop-down menu would come up. All you got to do is add trend line. And this on the side should pop up. And you want... In most cases in this lab, I believe it's all linear, um, but you also want to display equation on chart. And I think in some instances, display your R squared value, and that would pop up here. And usually you want to click and drag it so it's in a place where uh, it's visible and not um, within the graph, right? And so this is your Y equals MX plus B equation, and this is your R squared. So how confident your your uh, interval is. So with that, remember, every graph should have a title, right? And that title should be pertinent. You should not say it's X versus Y on your graph. You want to tell people what your graph means. Make sure that both of your axes have titles and units so that we know what those numbers mean on the side of your graph. Okay. Make your graph nice by deleting the grid lines and also change the range of your axes. And that way your data is going to fill the graph. And we'll make another video to show how to make that graph nice. Good luck.